That's why you couldn't throw up your hands. That's why you kept coming back to this chair. That's why you couldn't just walk away. The way you didn't have any friends. The way you didn't hang out with anybody. The way you declined social invitations. Didn't want to go to department parties. In the past, even with Isabel, you just wanted to work and come home and be with her. Be with her. Maybe too vigilant, too protective. As if, if you could have always been with her, could have always kept a watch on her, then you could have kept her, kept her safe. And it was true, too, mostly true, unless you'd met a foe which was invincible, indomitable, unbeatable, in which case then you would have both died. Both of you died fighting to protect her. And look at what you've got now. Tears falling away. Silent tears. Maybe this is what it was about crying until all of the crying was done, touching the hurt until the hurt no longer hurt, healing it, coming to terms with it, facing it, the loss, the loss, the loss, the depth of your loss. Don't let people get close to you. It will only hurt. What are the tears about, Dr. G asks. What are your fears about? What are your tears about? What are your fears about? What kind of a man doesn't face his fears? And so you move forward, something in you, drawing you forward, as if it's that same something which draws a blade of grass forward, draws a tree forward, the way a blade of grass can rise up out of the ground, out of the darkness. How does it know which direction to rise? Something calling it forward, the warmth and light of the sun, the warmth and the light, the tree, too, the way a tree can bend around objects, a roof, to get at the sun, grow towards the light, as if it's the same thing within you.